All right, so welcome back to the One Class channel. Again, my name is Joey. I'm going to be your math teacher for the following session. So, uh, just a little bit our, but about One Class if you're tuning in for the first time. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going through a kind of um, a session of just verifying solutions for frequently asked questions by high school students and university and college students all around the world. So, these are mostly focusing on subjects as in the mathematics um, and also in chemistry as well. So, specifically today, what we're going to do. <clears throat> is we are going to look at solutions and look at some questions um, basically for this hour. We have about 11 questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at these solutions that are coming from basically Algebra 2 and pre-calculus questions. So a um, much more kind of like senior level math um, in high school. So typically what we see probably in about grade 10 to grade 12 math and calculus as well. So we're going to look at those uh, these questions for today. Again, my name is Joey. I'm currently a secondary school educator in the in Ontario. And um, what my teachable subjects are chemistry and music, but I'm also planning to get my mathematics teachable in um, by September as well. So uh, without further ado, let's get started on these problems. I have about 11 problems. So let's see if we can get through these guys here. <clears throat> So uh, we ended off our actually previous video with this question. I never actually got to fully solve the solution for us. So I'm going to look at this one and we're going to do this problem here. Uh, this problem is a pretty, I would say it's a pretty tough problem just because what we have here, it's not as tough as the Norman window problem that we were looking at before because that one had irregular shapes. But this one is, um, again, a kind of what you would see probably in a, in a grade 12 calculus kind of um, grade 12 calculus kind of setting. And uh, what we're doing uh, with this question is we are, it's an optimization question. So when we figure out this optimization question, what we're gonna do is that we're going, I'm, I'll show you the steps to kind of tackle these kind of problems with us. For us, sorry. So it says, um, for 10 marks, the top and bottom margins of a poster are each 10 centimeters and the side margins are two centimeters, uh, two centimeters. If the area of the printed material on the uh, poster is fixed at 50 centimeters squared, uh, find the dimensions uh, of the poster and with the smallest area. So it's, we're going to check that the value obtained is indeed a minimum. So let me do this question for us. So uh, I'm going to basically make a diagram here, make, make a rectangle here. And this here is made our poster. And then we have margins of a poster. So we're going to have something that's slightly bigger, maybe, maybe even bigger than that. It looks good. So we're going to have kind of a poster and then we have margins of a poster, right? So we can say that uh, we have here top and bottom. So the top and bottom poster posters are this here. This is four centimeters. This guy here is also four centimeters as well. And then what we have here is um, the side margins are two centimeters, right? So these guys two and this here is two as well. Let me erase this. We're going to assume it's centimeters, not assume, but I'm just going to write here it's centimeters. And then what we care about is if the area of the printed material on the poster is fixed at 50 centimeters, so the area of this inside here is 50 centimeters, find the dimensions of the poster with the smallest area. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, so let's solve this problem here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, I'm given the area here. The area here is 50 centimeters squared, right? So I'm going to write here 50 centimeters squared, or maybe I'll write the area here. The area... The area of the total poster here, so I'm say area of the total poster is obviously going to be the area of this rectangle, right? And we know the area of a rectangle here is uh, L times W or X times Y. Um, I'm, in this case, I'm going to write here. I'm going to let this here be X. I'm going to let X be the uh, the width of the um, sorry the length of the, um, the 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 poster and Y be the width of the poster. What we can do is we can actually write an algebra equation, right? I can say here X here is equal to um, this here would be x here is equal to, um, I'm, I'm looking for the poster uh, by itself. So I'm looking for the area of the poster here. This is the area. So this here is our poster, right? And then we know that the area of the poster here is going to be x here. If the total length here is x here, we can make a, uh, an algebraic expression for if the total area here is x. And then uh, maybe, I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do this in different colors actually. So if the entire length here is x, and this here is y, the entire the entire length of the poster here is y, we can say that we can make an algebraic expression for the uh, for the um, for the uh, for the for the, the for the, just the poster. Right? We can say that here this is here x equals, or we can say x is minus 
2 times 2, right? Because I have um, this here side length is 2 and this side length here is 2. And similarly with y, I can say this is y minus this would be 2 times 4, right? So I have uh, some sort of um, area here. So I can, uh, uh, I can, I have an algebra expression for specifically the poster here, right? Because again, the top and bottom here are four centimeters and the side here is two, right? So this here is, um, this here, this here is a, our algebra expression for this. And I can say that the area of the poster, where, let me, let me see if I write this down. The area of the poster is going to equal, again, obviously the length and the width, right? So I'm gonna say here it's X, minus two times two here is four oh, times four here times y here minus two two times four here is eight right which is that so x minus four times y minus eight and this is obviously going to equal 50 centimeters right because i'm given a 50 centimeters squared here right so i have an algebraic expression for the poster what i can do here is i can actually expand this and isolate for a variable here right so let's do that so i'm gonna have i'm gonna rewrite this as 50 equals x minus four times y minus eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use FOIL to uh, expand this. So I have x times y, I have x times y here, so x, y. x times negative eight is obviously negative eight x. Negative four times y here is negative four y, and negative four times negative eight here is positive 32, right? So we have these, these couple of, uh, we have th these guys here. And what we're going to do is we are going to isolate for one of these variables. We're going to isolate for probably y here. And the reason why we want to do isolate for a variable is because we're going to have to uh, create another formula for us to optimize. Right? We want an area of the entire poster here, which is probably x times y. Right? We want the area of the entire poster. And what we're going to do is we're going to minimize that area. So let me isolate for one of these variables. I'm going to isolate y, for example. Um, so we move 30 to the other side, 50 minus 30, I'm going to subtract 32 from the both sides. I'm going to get 18 on this side. I'm going to get x, y minus 8x plus minus 4y, sorry. And then I'm going to move 8x to the other side as well. So I'll have 18 plus 8x here equals x, y minus 4y. And then what I can do here now is I can um, I can factor a common factor of this y, right? I know that 18 plus 8x here equals, I can factor of this y here. So I'm left with x here minus four, and I can divide both sides by minus four, x minus four, right? So y here, I have my algebra expression, which is 18 plus 8x divided by x minus four here. And this here is going to be my, <clears throat> my um, algebra expression for y here, for y here. And what I can do now is I'm gonna zoom out for us. <clears throat> and I'm gonna look at, okay, I'm gonna look at now, uh, I'm gonna write in blue here, and I'm gonna write down the, um, I wanna air, maximize a specific area, right? So the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the area of the entire poster here. So the area of the entire poster is gonna equal obviously x times y, right? x times y here, because this is the full length. I set the full length here as x, and the full length uh, or the width here is y, right? So it's gonna be x times y here. And then what I can do is I can substitute my y value for this guy here, right? So I can substitute uh, y here and I will, I'm only left with one variable. So that's why we isolated for a variable here, right? So we can, so we can say here a year here equals x times 18 plus 8x divided by x plus 4. And then what I can do now is I can simply... Uh, I can simply, what I can do here is I can take the derivative, right? Because I want to take a prime, a prime here of x for us to solve, to minimize our error, right? Because again, it says here, find the dimensions with the smallest area, which means it's an optimization question, which means I'm going to have to find the derivative of this guy here. So let me do that. <clears throat> so basically, I'm going to have a prime here. It's going to equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the simply the product rule, right? I'm going to do the product rule for my derivative. So I'm just taking the derivative of the uh, first variable here, which is x, which is simply just one times uh, uh, x. So I can, maybe I'll, maybe I'll specify this for you as well. So I'm gonna say product rule here, this is f of x, and this here would be g of x, right? So the a prime or um, uh, the derivative is gonna be f of x times the g prime of x plus the uh, f uh, plus f of x times g prime of x, right? So we're gonna have to do 18 plus 8x over x plus 4 plus, and then which is uh, plus x times uh, the derivative of this inside here. And if we want to find the derivative of this inside here, what we're going to have to do is um, <coughs> we're going to have to 
to the quotient rule to figure out uh, this guy here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, instead of doing the product rule, because this looks like a lot of work, I'm going to actually factor in before I do the derivative. So let me just, um, <clears throat> I'm thinking about my kind of technique here, and I don't think it's actually the most effective. So I'm just going to put x plus 4 here. And let's see. If I'm just going to go over and check my work here. X plus Y minus X times 8 is negative. This is negative. It's positive. Okay. I think we should, we should be good. Okay. So we have A prime here. What I'm going to do first before taking the derivative is I'm going, I'm going to actually uh, uh, fact, uh, t multiply this X in. So if I multiply this X in, I'm going to get 18X plus 8X squared all over X plus 4, right? So I'm going to have this here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my quotient rule. So I'm going to do a prime here equals. So if you recall from the quotient rule for our derivatives, what we're going to have to do is um, <clears throat> we have here, we have two functions here, right? So we have, you can think of this as our, um, you can think of this as our, as our f of x, and you can think of this as our g of x, right? So you can think of, let me, uh, let me write this down for you. So you can think of this function as f of x. And this is g of x, right? So if we want to find the derivative of f of x divided by g of x. What we have to do is we're going to take g of x here, which is simply um, x plus 4. And then we're going to multiply it by f prime of x. So we're going to take the derivative of this top guy here, which is simply just 18 plus 2 times 8 here is 16x. And then we're going to minus f of x, which is 18x plus 8x squared times the derivative of the bottom part, right? But the derivative of the bottom part here is simply just one, right? The derivative of x plus four is simply just one here. So multiply that by one, and then we put all over uh, g of x squared. So I'm gonna square this term here. So x plus four, and then I'm gonna square this term here. So this here, I've applied my quotient rule to find the derivative here. And all I'm gonna have to do here is I'm simply, um, I'm simply just collecting some like terms. And um, I'm gonna set the derivative to zero in this case for us to solve for the uh, minimum here. So that's what we're doing. So let me set this to zero. I'm setting a prime to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor in and hopefully collect some like terms here. So again, I can FOIL x plus four and 18x plus x plus 16x here. So FOILing this, I would get 18x uh, plus 16x squared, plus uh, 18 times 4 is 72, plus this is 64x minus, and then this is simply just times 1, right? So I can just simply write 18x plus x squared here. And then this is all over, this here is all over x plus 4 squared. So now I can collect some common terms here, right? So I have here 16x squared plus 16x squared plus 8x squared. So I'm gonna have 24x squared. Let me do this back in the yeah, I'll do this in red. Actually, no, I'll do this back in blue. So 24x squared. Um, what other terms I have here? I have 18x, 64x, and minus 18x, right? So I'm gonna say 18 plus 64 minus 18 here, which is simply just 64, obviously, because these two guys cancel out. So I'm going to have plus 64x. And then all I'm left here is uh, this 72, right? Plus 72 here. And this is still all over x plus 4 squared here. So again, what I can do now is I could either, and this here I can set to zero, right? And this is obviously set to zero. <clears throat> What I could do is if I want to kind of uh, expand this guy here, I would actually factor out, the, uh, factor out the top here, right? I would factor out the top to see if I can actually get some type of common factor here. So in order for us to factor out the top, I'm looking at these guys here. I think they're all divisible by eight. <coughs> so I'm gonna take out eight here. I'm gonna get three X squared plus eight X plus, I believe this is 12, all over X plus four squared. This here now, I'm and then I'm simply just factoring this top part here, right? So I can I can do decomposition. So three times twelve here, product of three times twelve has to add up to eight. So thirty six has to add up to eight. Um, let's 
see. I don't know if this is actually factorable. So, yeah, I don't think this is actually factorable. So what I would have to do is, um, let's see. If this top part is factorable, then I would basically just get, um, uh, let's see. Because I'm trying to cancel out this top and bottom part, part to solve for zero here, right? So I might have to actually back back backtrack here. And this here was zero, right? I might have to, act, uh, I might have to expand this to see if I can factor out something from the top and the bottom here, um, just to figure some some stuff out. So let me do that for you real quick. So then I guess I, I won't I won't factor this part, or I, I'll I'll keep the factor here. And all I'm going to do is this here is eight three x squared is twelve. And then if I factor out this, this is a perfect square trinomial, obviously. I'm going to x squared here plus 8x plus 16 here. And <clears throat> let's see. I don't know if I can um, if I can cancel these out, these two terms out here. But if I'm, again, because I'm because I'm eight, 8 here is a separate term here, I can cross out um, uh, I can cross out, I can divide out these two terms to get 3. I can cross out this 8 term here, and then this 12 is simply just 12 over 16 here. So let's see. Because I, I, I don't really want my x axis to cancel out here. Um, so let me just think about this problem here. Uh, 1 minus 1 here is still 0. So these guys again cancel out here is no good and I'm left with just simply numbers here that's no good so I have, to, I have to somehow solve for my x so I'm just gonna look back at my let me see if I did my quotient real correctly here just to see if I did it right here I have g of x here which is 8x plus 4 times the derivative of this which is 18 plus 16x which is great times uh or minus sorry minus 18x plus 8x squared times the derivative of g of x which is 1 times x plus 4 squared. So I should get something like this. Let me see if I fold correctly. x here would be 18x. This would be 16x squared. This here would be 7, I, 18, 18 times 4 is 72. And then 4 times 16 here is 64 minus 18x plus 8x squared. Yeah, so that should be okay. These two guys cancel out. I get 24x squared plus 64x here plus 72 times this. So I, I think my math here is good. Um, and then I'm just going to set this to zero to basically solve for my x value here. Um, yes, I'm basically solving for my x value here. So I, I'm I'm basically left with this guy here, right? So this guy here is, um, or actually I'm I don't even think I should factor here. I think I should just leave this, leave this here. So this here this here would be our kind of like the most math we can do to simplify this problem, right? So basically what I'm left here with this here I have zero on one side and I have something divided by zero here, right? So basically what I have to do is if I want to solve for the zero here, I'm going to say that this here times what number here equals zero, right? I can set these two terms to equal to equal some type of zero, right? So I can say here that um, that x x plus four here is going to equal 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 zero here. I can set this to zero because if I'm going to multiply this number by this number, it has to equal zero, right? So one of these guys has to equal zero here. So uh, I can set basically this top part here to zero to see if I can solve for something here. Um, but I believe that I don't think it's actually factorable. Three, five, and eight will give me a complex number here. So if I get a complex number here, then I would have to simply just do um, I would have to do I have to set x plus four here to zero to solve for um, to solve for something. Uh, so 
so let's see. I'm going to solve for x plus 4 here, which equals to 0. So therefore, x has to equal negative 4 here. But negative 4 doesn't make any sense here because I have a negative length, which does not make sense here. So let me just go back to... Oh, that makes sense. Okay, I, I know where I messed up here. I put in x plus 4 instead of x minus 4. Yes. So this should be minus 4. This is minus 4. This here is minus 4. And this here is minus 4. Okay, okay, I think we're good here. So basically I have, I have, um, let's see, x minus 4 squared here would be, again, a perfect square trinomial. I can say x minus 4. So I copied, I copied the wrong, uh, wrong problem, sorry. x minus 4, x minus 4 here. I can expand this to get... Uh, x squared minus 8x plus 16. So I can write that that down here, right? So hopefully, uh, there's terms that would cancel out here. Divided by uh, x squared. This here's x squared uh, minus 8x plus 6. And these two terms will now cancel out, right? So I can simply just divide out here. So again, these two terms, uh, th these uh, x's would cancel out here. And then I believe that the x's will also cancel out here. So that is actually no good again. So what I would do here, let's think about this problem here. So again, because the x's here cancel out, I can't actually, um, this doesn't make sense here. So what I'm going to do here is I have x minus 4 squared here. And again, I'm setting this entire equation to 0, right? So again, here x has to be x has to be greater than uh, 4 here, right? Because again, I can't my denominator here cannot be 0 here. So if it can't be 4 here, then um, I'm going to have, I'm basically going to set here x minus 4 here squared here, it's going to have to equal, again, my area here, which was 50, 50, right? 50, 50 here. So I'm going to solve for this solution here. So solve to solve for x here. So again, I have x minus 4 squared equals 50. I can square root both sides to get x minus 4 is equal, equal to root 50. And then finally, x here would equal root 50 plus 4 here. If I want to simplify it to radical, to get rid of the radical here, I would get simply something like this. And then I would get 5 root 2 plus 4 here. And this here would be my x value for the uh, total length of the poster. I'm going to just solve, uh, do that in decimals for you so you get some type of value, uh, which is 11.07, or 11.1, I think. I don't think they want it in the uh, nearest, um, nearest, uh, nearest decimal. So if x here equals 11.1, then I can simply just say, I can solve this back for this AT here. And um, this total area is going to equal again, um, or I can solve for the area of the poster here, right? So I, I can solve for, I can use that to solve for um, the area of the poster. And this here is going to equal, or I, I'm gonna use this equation, sorry. I'm using this equation here. So 50 here equals X here, which is, um, X here is, 11.1, I believe, 11 point, 11.4, 11.1, sorry. So here's 11.1 minus four times y minus eight. 11.1 here minus four would equal 7.1 times y minus eight. Again, I can factor out, or I can expand to get 7.1 times negative eight here which would be negative 56.8. And then I'm running out of space here, but that's okay. I add both sides by 56.8 to get uh, 106.8 equals 7.1y. And I can finally divide both sides by 7.1 to get my value, which is 15.04 here. So 15.04 here would be the length of the poster. So again, my dimensions here are simply 11.1 .1 here and 15.4. So therefore, after all that math here, first big question are dimensions 
for the smallest area for uh, poster is, and then you would write here 11.1, .1, sorry, 11.1 .1 centimeters by 15.04 centimeters and this here is our solution and again this here is definitely an incomplete solution they did nowhere as much work as i did here um, but this here gives us a good um good uh, good good kind of uh, grasp as to what we're doing here again it took me half an hour to do this problem you know, the optimization questions do usually take a lot it's because i messed up here i didn't copy x mass 4 correctly so that was totally my fault but we could have done this problem much faster if i didn't make that mistake here but what we're doing here is again we're setting an algebraic expression for the poster we're finding an area of the rectangle we're isolating for a variable and then we're substituting it into an, another area formula right so we have the area of a poster and then we have the total area here and we're given an area of the poster first so we can solve for a variable here and what we can do is we're simply just plugging in this y value for uh for a substitute direct substitution here to solve to mit and then take the derivative to minimize the area of the uh, to min minimize the area right so that's what we're doing um in this problem here um actually i think the dimensions of the poster or is it the, the total area is 11.504 sorry um i think i messed up here uh again uh but 11.1 .1, i'm gonna have to actually do i'm gonna have to subtract the borders to that right so again, because uh, the area of the poster is x minus four here. So I'm gonna have the, the, the area of the poster, because this here is the total area, not the area of the poster. The total area would be 11.1 .1 minus four. 11.1 .1 minus four, which is 7.1. .1. So seven, it's gonna be 7.1 .1 by whatever 15.04 minus, uh, minus eight here is which is 15.04 minus eight here is 7.04. And this here is my answer. This here is, sorry, is the solution here. 7.1 by 7.04 here is my answer here because this, again, the, 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 um, the area of this is going to equal 50 or approximately 50. So this here is the correct answer. This here was not dimensions of the poster. This is dimensions of the total, the total with the margins here. So this is with the poster with margins. And this here is the, let me clarify this, this here is the dimensions for the poster. So I forgot to substitute back in. Of a poster. So this solution here is incorrect, obviously. They didn't show any work. Is incorrect. Did not show, did not show any work. And the correct solution is 7.1 centimeters by 7.04 centimeters for the dimensions of the poster to have the smallest area here. Okay, so the solution here is incorrect.